Okay, so this is an immediate denture. I've already added wax onto, onto the patient's right side. I just want to go ahead and quickly add some of this melted wax so I have something to, uh, to festoon. If this was not an immediate, then there would be a base plate underneath there, probably. But in this case, I'm waxing right against the stone cast. So with some melted wax, I'm able to just apply it on here as long as I can keep it at the right consistency and not be running all over the place. I can add it fairly quickly. Otherwise, you can take a sheet of, you can also take a sheet of wax and soften it over the flame and apply it and then try and melt it. But as I've got a wax pot of melted wax here already, I can just apply it this way. And then I can flame it with the alcohol torch a little bit just to blend things together a little more before I start carving it. And later I'm gonna put a preformed palette in this one rather than just a sheet of base plate waxes. It's an immediate and the patient has not been uh, wearing anything that they would object to feeling some ruge up there. So I want to be sure and fill all these peripheries. And it's going to come out looking something like that before I flame it lightly and blend things together. Okay, now I've added my wax, I've flamed it with an alcohol torch, and I'm going to carve the gingerbread. I'm going to festoon this, at least on the facial of this quadrant. Take a roach carver. I'm coming at it from this angle. I want to cut down to the, the cemento enamel junction, the CEJ part of the denture teeth. This particular one is an immediate, and we're festooning it for processing, not for a wax try-in. If it was for a wax try-in, there'd be a base plate and it wouldn't be attached or sealed down at the peripheries. And I've just taken off what I carved away. But I want to expose the tooth down below the crest of convexity to try and help it stay in when we are flasking. Otherwise, it's going to tend to fall out in the boil out and then uh, uh, the teeth may not go back in the right position. So make sure you're carved all the way down. Just not below the edge of the tooth. If you can feel the edge of the tooth, then you got to add some more wax, depending on how much you've ground on it. If you come at this from the occlusal, then, the, then you're creating a trough. By coming at it from here, we're creating a shelf that falls away from the tooth and it's not a food trap. If we get at it from up here, then we're creating a food trap or a groove in there, and I don't want to do that. I want to come at it from down here, which is going to be a little awkward at first. The tendency is to come at it from the occlusal. So you can expose some, and if you think you're not all the way fully exposed, so you don't have the facial of the denture tooth exposed, then carve a little more. And part of this is dependent on the size and the and the length of the denture teeth that you've selected, the mold that you've selected too. Okay, so we'll get it looking like that. Now we need to take and remove some of this shelf off of here. Take a number seven roach carver, number sorry, number seven wax spatula. I'm gonna take this down to where we wanna leave at, at least a millimeter of that shelf on there. We don't want to make this so thin that uh, the denture, the root portion of the denture teeth shows through. Like that. Now, 
If we want to make some root prominences on here, I'm going to reduce a little in between the teeth. I'm going to have a pretty good size root above the central. I'm going to have a very short root above the lateral. So it breaks up the difference between the two. We don't want it to look like stove pipes, all the same size coming out of each tooth. The canine eminence is going to be the largest. This particular case is an immediate denture so that the ridge has not resorbed any. So we don't, it's taking up a lot of our space. We don't want to, we can't add a lot of bulk onto this. The denture is going to be fairly thin because the ridge hasn't resorbed. So if you start seeing the yellow cast through the wax, you know you're getting too thin and you're going to have to add more wax on. And that's the case with this. It's pretty large ridges that have not yet resorbed. So it's going to look something like that. Next I want to take a brush and I want to brush the wax off the denture teeth and then I'm going to flame it with the alcohol torch. taking the alcohol torch, I'm going to flame it, just melting the surface and I want to go in the direction of the roots and I'm going to aim at the interproximal areas between the teeth. I don't have to aim much at the high spots, it's going to hit those without even trying. Something like that. The periphery, I, then I can go across the periphery and kind of blend things together. So, without taking a lot of time, it's going to look something like that. Now I can go ahead where it's kind of run up on the teeth. I can take and carve it once more and then I don't flame it again. Otherwise, it's just going to run right back up there. And then lastly, if you want to hit it with a number 11 standard stiff Robinson denture brush to take any last film of wax off the teeth. You can do that. Just go real slow with it and gentle so it doesn't cut into the tooth. So it'll look something like that and you can continue doing that all the way around. 